Okay, flood levies for units that don't have cover. Are there terms of reference set up to manage the costs? What do bodies corporate do? So I think this question might be about um, Brisbane had a flood, as I'm sure everybody knows, in early 2022, and some buildings either did not have flood insurance or the building knew it would flood and therefore flood insurance was either unavailable or extremely expensive. Um, you know, sometimes a, and a building that has $40,000 of insurance each year might have to spend 300000 or 400000 a year to get flood insurance. If the insurer is pretty confident that your building will flood, it doesn't want to give you insurance for something that it knows will happen. So those buildings, some of them are considering um, setting up an additional levy and an additional fund and basically saving up separately to the sinking fund an amount of money that it acts as self-insurance. So if the flood occurs, they can spend that money on fixing the flood damage or improving the building so that the flood damage is less severe. And the reason that that would be separate is because the sinking fund is reserved for the maintenance of the building and flood is something which is not anticipated in that forecast. So buildings can um, make additional levies for flood flood resilience or a flood fund, the management of that would be governed by the committee. The spending out of that flood fund would be governed by the body corporate the same way that any major spending is, is controlled. Um, and owners would be able to see on the financial statements how much is in the administrative fund, the sinking fund, and then, you know, the third fund, call it the flood fund or the resilience fund. The resilience fund. That's something we're seeing more and more and we're recommending to those buildings where they can't afford or can't get flood insurance is to start putting money aside for the next flood so that they're not um, in a position where they've got a lot of costs and no money to pay for them.